yeah, okay. And yeah, again, welcome to this online information meeting. You're here because you're interested in an edit gap semester for the 24-25 academic year. And today our goal is to let you know everything you might need to know about this. Uh, so yeah, our agenda for the day is uh, first of all to introduce the edit gap semester and to present the partner universities that can receive you for a semester and give you all the useful links, the contact information and answer obviously your questions. Uh, as my colleague wrote it in the chat, uh, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to write them down there in the chat box so that we can read them at the end of the meeting and answer them. And uh, also, if you wish to receive the um, presentation that we're showing right now, uh, please write a direct message to Theodora in the chat box and she with your email address and she'll be able to send that to you at the end of the meeting. Uh, Colleen, right. uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. On my side, I don't have access to the chat box. Oh, uh, so is it only me or just to double check with everyone that we have access because on our side we don't. OK, this is not normal. Um, OK, I'll check. Does, uh, what about other colleagues? Do you have access to the chat box? If anyone has access, can you please write down something in the chat? OK, Fabio can. So, Chloe, maybe it's on your side? OK, it's only on our side. It's fine then. Do okay. not worry about us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Perfect. If everyone, if students have access to the chat, I guess that's the most important part. Uh, what you can do as well uh, for all the students that are joining us, maybe it's uh, uh, in just a small introduction and let us know from which university you're coming. It's always interesting for us to know, uh, well, where you're coming from and where you might want to go. Right. So without further ado, let's get into it and into the presentation of the gap semester. But first, what is EDUC? You might already have heard of us, I hope, uh, but basically EDUC stands for European Digital University and it's an alliance of eight European universities that's labeled a European university and we are funded by the European Commission. And our goal is to offer cross-disciplinary uh, opportunities that are based on pedagogical and digital innovations. And we are dedicated to foster student mobility, uh, which we are trying to do obviously with the gap semester, for example. And what is the gap semester, you might ask? So basically it's a new mobility of one semester, except for UPN students, if there are some of you here, uh, but you can ask us directly at UPN if you have questions. Uh, but the goal of this mobility is to study other subjects than what you're initially studying at your home university. And that means um, sort of an interruption in your studies at your home university, but you're still treated as an exchange student at the receiving university. And the only thing is unlike an Erasmus plus mobility does not necessarily count towards your degree. Uh, there is an exception for MU students as is written there, but basically the rule is that it's an additional semester that you're taking. Um, some specific rules might apply at your university, so I encourage you to get in touch with your local EDUC team if you have any specific questions. Um, Another principle of the gap semester is that it's open to all EDUC students at bachelor or master level. And obviously when you select and attend uh, courses, you need to make sure that you have courses equivalent to 30 CTS credits for one semester. Now, what is the added value of the gap semester? First of all, as I mentioned, it's the disciplinary openness of the scheme. That is that you can study one or several disciplines that are different from your current diploma. And this, the goal of this is to allow you to personalize your profile, to differentiate yourself to recruiters, and obviously as with any physical mobility to also provide you with linguistic immersion so that you can learn and improve your skills in any of the languages of the Alliance, and we have many, and also in other languages that you might be able to learn at our um, language centers locally. Uh, it also obviously allows you to discover another country in Europe and to uh, develop new soft skills, um, to differentiate yourself on the job market later on, and last but not least, it allows you to make friends all over Europe, which is always a nice addition to a mobility. Now, 
on to the more serious part, uh, the conditions and the application process. So obviously the application campaign is now open. That's why uh, you're here. And uh, the goal is for mobility during the academic year 24 or 25, so next year. And you have to apply at your home university for this. There are several uh, different deadlines depending on your uh, home university. Here they are listed, but obviously if you have any questions, you can still ask your local edit team for uh, any additional info. Um, what you need to keep in mind though is that you will all have to give us several documents and first of all it's a completed application form and you please check with your home university on your home university's website um, where you should send this application form uh, you also need to provide a cover letter written in english and a proof of language skills in the teaching language and it must be a b2 level that means that if you go for example if you want to go to france and you want to study only french courses in French, then you need to provide a certificate for French. If you choose only link, only courses with English, then just an English level certificate. Now, uh, regarding the process and the dates, uh, the, uh, the timeline of the application. So today is the 23rd of February and we have this info meeting uh, and the application deadlines are mostly until the 15th of March, so you still have three weeks or so until the, the, the application deadline, which gives you a bit of time to do your application. And then after that, we'll go through all the applications locally and we will pre-select applications and send these pre-selected applications to our partner universities so that they can look through them and make the final decisions. And uh, after that, students will all be notified uh, whether they have been selected or not and the administrative procedure will follow so gap semester agreement learning agreement registration don't worry we'll let you know all the steps uh, if you are selected so yeah don't worry too much about that as of now as for the mobility scholarship it's a fixed amount per month uh, depending on your home university and your destination it may vary and uh, it is also pro rata of the actual presence over the study period. So we take into account when exactly you arrived and when exactly you left. And that might change slightly the amount slightly. And you also receive the travel grant, which is a fixed amount and that you receive once. And that also the amount depends also on your home university. So please check on your university's website uh, on the gap year section to know exactly how much the grant is for each month and the travel grant as well. OK, and after all this general information, now we'll get to presenting our uh, universities. And the first one is actually the Université Paris-Nanterre, which I am from, but I will let, uh, I would leave the floor to one of my colleagues, uh, either Theodora or Simona. I'm not sure who is there. Uh, here. OK, perfect. Then I'll leave the floor to my colleague, mm -hmm. Simona. Hello. So this is Simona Tershini speaking about Nanterre. Uh, our university has four campuses in the western part of Paris. Um, some, some information about uh, the students, because in our university we have uh, 34,000 students with almost uh, 6,000 uh, international students. And uh, we have uh, two points, uh, um, two important points, because our uh, university as a, uh, an academic, academic offer um, in four domains of studies. The first one is a human and social sciences. The second domain is the sciences, technology and health. The fourth, the, the three, uh, the third domain is art, humanities and languages. And the fourth is law, economics and business. Um, our offer um, is about a cultural uh, and sports offer and um, some, uh, for cultural activities. I mean, we have many cultural activities and events offered by our cultural center. And uh, we have a lot of uh, library and, uh, and especially the contemporary uh, library. Um, it could be very interesting for international students. That's all. 
I think it's okay. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello on my side as well. I'm uh, taking the floor in order to provide you with some uh, extra useful information if you get selected to come for a gap year mobility in uh, Paris Nanterre. So upon your arrival, uh, the first thing you need to do if you want to simplify your life is uh, pay a visit to our welcome desk, which is also a part of our international relations uh, team here in Nanterre. Uh, and our colleagues here will be able to provide you with uh, useful information regarding administrative formalities you might need to carry out and in general uh, advice uh, about your day-to-day -day life um, here in Paris. And please note, uh, we will remind you later again if you get selected, but please note that if you want to apply for a room in uh, the university residency, uh, you need to let us know before the 31st of May as the rooms are limited and there is a uh, strict deadlines uh, from the part of the residency. Uh, now about the course catalog, uh, about the selection of your courses in Nanterre, we have a tool that is called the course catalog, uh, which is unfortunately only in French. And uh, yes, you can go there and uh, search uh, easily the type of courses that you're interested to. Uh, for our gap year uh, students, uh, we recommend that you only select uh, courses. Uh, the previous uh, slide. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, yes. Uh, so yes, we recommend that you choose only bachelor level courses, as uh, probably you will not have the request requests to uh, follow uh, master level uh, courses. Um, also in uh, most of the cases, um, uh, students here are required to have a B2 level in French languages, language as most of our courses are in French. There is of course exceptions, but uh, yes, just to keep in mind that uh, you, uh, French uh, knowledge is very important uh, for your uh, mobility in uh, Paris Nanterre. Uh, you will be required also to choose uh, courses of an equivalent of 30 CTS, as my colleague uh, Colleen uh, has precised in the beginning. And um, yes, uh, they need to be outside of your uh, current field of studies, as this is not a mobility to continue your studies, but it's mostly an opportunity to do a disciplinary openness. And in order to be sure that um, you will be accepted um, in uh, the courses as soon as you arrive in Nanterre, uh, you need to take, pay attention in this uh, section of uh, the course catalog. Uh, in the mission uh, ouvert to étudiants en essence, uh, it has to have a oui on the side. And like that, you're sure that uh, the teachers will accept you along with the Nanterre students in their course. Okay, thank you, Simona and Theodora. Uh, so that was it for Nanterre. And now we'll go to Rennes. If uh, Chloe wants to uh, take yes. over. Yeah, uh, thank you, Colleen. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will try to make this short. Uh, so the University of Rennes is also situated in France. Rennes is the capital city of the region called Brittany which is in the west part and it's surrounded by the sea. Um, so it's quite a nice environmental context, let's say, to study. Uh, city of Rennes is um, very lively, uh, full of students, about 60 or 70,000 students uh, live in the, in the city. Uh, there are also a lot of bars and cultural events throughout the year. So usually students don't get bored when they come to Rennes. Uh, on the weekend, uh, it's also easy to get on a train and go to the seaside, as you can see on the picture on the top. And it's also not so far an hour and a half on the train um, for Paris. So students can also go, you know, for a weekend there. Uh, we indicated an average living cost per month so that uh, you know the students have an average idea of what is the budget needed uh, to live in Rennes. Uh, next please. Yeah so those are some um, you know figures um, so you can read them uh, so there there is a, a 
quite an important part uh, dedicated to research at our university with many research labs. And we also host uh, many international students, among which uh, also some Erasmus students uh, coming from all over Europe, but also from, you know, um, outside Europe. Uh, so these are the different um, field of study uh, that we offer at the University of Rennes. Uh, we uh, highlighted in uh, black squares here um, the courses that are available in English uh, at bachelor level. So as you can see, we don't have so many uh, because mainly uh, programs taught in English at um, in Rennes at, uh, at master's, master's level. Uh, so for bachelor level courses without prerequisites, uh, we recommend students to select courses at the School of Management. There are a wide range of really interesting courses there. And there are also a few courses at the um, Faculty of uh, Law and Political Science and Philosophy as well. Uh, for students who have um, B1, B2 uh, proficiency level in French, then many other courses, of course, are offered to you in French. And then those are the usual student services, let's say, that um, all our universities offer to the students, such as libraries, ports, restaurants, um, student organization, health services, um, many cultural events as well. And there is a link here where you can discover the campus uh, kind of um, with a 360 platform. And here are some useful links as well uh, for students to be welcome in Rennes uh, about accommodation, cultural activities. There is an international student guide as well, providing many useful information about the university and how it works um, so that a student can, students can anticipate uh, the best uh, before coming to Rennes. Thank you, Chloe. I think this was the last uh, slide for Perfect. Ken. If you uh, have questions, just don't hesitate and we'll there to answer. Thank you. And the next one is at Masaryk University, so I leave the floor to Christina. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christina Hosova and I am project administrator at Masaryk University. And Masaryk University is a university in Czech Republic in Brno. Thank you. Uh, it was established more than uh, 100 years ago, and we have approximately 34,000 uh, students, we, where 22 persons a uh, person consists of international students, so we are kind of international, we hope to say. Uh, also, we have more than 80 uh, English taught programs across 10 faculties, which means we have uh, more than that uh, courses where you can um, choose from. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Faculty of Medicine and Pharmacy is not available, but I think uh, students can select a from wide range of courses from uh, available faculties. Uh, also, um, in the uh, there is also MU course catalog where um, courses available to international students are listed. And I also wanted to point out our uh, orientation week, which is uh, one week before the start of the semester when we introduce our university, uh, show students around, show some good uh, spots to like um, hang out with other students, uh, but also uh, show them how to use, for example, our system. Next, please. Yeah, we have also some inter uh, interesting facilities like uh, SATEC or simulation hospital, or you can participate uh, in our radio or TV. So if you are interested in this, definitely apply for uh, journalistic classes. We have also research station in Antarctica. Unfortunately, you will not get there, but maybe you will have um, some teachers who were there and you can process some data. Next, please. Yeah, and why choose Brno? Uh, because Brno is the uh, sixth most popular uh, student city uh, with more than 6,000 international students every, uh, every academic year. 
which means basically uh, with all these universities in Brno, one fifth of the city is basically just students and living costs are around 550 to like 700 euros per month. Also, you can visit uh, some other uh, very nice cities like Vienna, Prague, Bratislava uh, and so on. And also Brno is certainly famous for its culture and social life with a lot of restaurants, cafes, but also concerts and uh, other things. Next slide, please. And here are 10 reasons why to study at MU. If you get to the presentation, then you can click on the picture and you will see, uh, you, you can explore more about these reasons. And I think that's all from me. Yeah, no, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> for good. Uh, here are some useful links. Uh, uh, as mentioned, a new course catalog uh, for international students, international student guide where you find more information about housing, orientation week, cal academic calendar, but a lot of useful information for international students. Also, um, you can see MU webpage or MU English Instagram if you are curious about more like day to day life of students. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in Brno. Thank you, Christina. OK, so next is the University of Cagliari. I'm not sure who is going to take over from here. It's my turn. Hello, Please everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes, perfect. OK, my name is Veronica and I am part of the EDUC team. And in charge of the GAP semester with Fabio, my colleague who is attending this meeting as well. Um, I'm going to provide you with a few information, um, a little information about the city and the university. Cagliari is the capital city of Sardinia. Sardinia is one of the biggest islands in the Mediterranean Sea and Cagliari is found right to the south and on the coast. So uh, we are only 10 minutes from a very long and beautiful um, beach called Poetto. Um, Cagliari um, has um, 150,000 inhabitants. That's why it's uh, the most popular, populous uh, urban uh, center of the island. And uh, um, we Provide, we offer, our city offer uh, a mixture of uh, beautiful elements uh, to, uh, to be interested in, in coming here because we have, uh, apart from the sea, which is clearly beautiful, uh, we have uh, um, a long history and you can find um, archaeological sites scattered uh, also in the center of, uh, of, the, of the city. We have uh, beautiful environmental sites uh, like, as I said, the, the beach, but also uh, Molentargios Park and Santa Gila Laguna, where you can find the pink, pink flamingos. Um, we uh, enjoy um, a Mediterranean climate, which um, gives us uh, a mild weather all year round, nearly. And uh, we have uh, ancient traditions. Uh, um, a very important feast for us uh, is uh, Sant'Efisio, our patron saint, uh, which takes place uh, on the 1st of May every year and which attracts uh, every year thousands of, of tourists. And which and this is just an example. We have several um, events uh, during the year that attract um, lots of people. We have a long uh, um, traditional uh, tradition in food and in uh, wine production. So uh, these are the main, uh, the most important elements that uh, can uh, characterize our city. Next slide, please. Okay, um, our university is quite old. It was established in uh, 1620 and we have uh, um, a multidisciplinary university since we have six different uh, faculties, which are biology and pharmacy, engineering and architecture, medicine and surgery, sciences, uh, economics, law and political sciences and humanities. As you can see, we have uh, more than 25,000 students uh, and nearly 2,000 uh, uh, members of uh, staff. 
among uh, teachers and administrative staff. We have several uh, courses, uh, uh, 42 uh, first cycle programs uh, and uh, 38 second cycle uh, programs, uh, which are batch, bachelor and master uh, in uh, the European definition and six uh, single uh, cycle programs. We also have uh, many specialization schools uh, and we have uh, a good uh, um, mobility of students, so we have many students coming from abroad uh, through um, Erasmus Plus and Globus Agreement, and we, we also have many students uh, going abroad to study, and that's why uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, more, more than 100 courses taught in English. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, students coming from abroad find here a very welcoming um, uh, situation since we have uh, many services for students. Uh, we have um, the four different districts according to the faculty they, they choose. Uh, three of them are found uh, right in the center of the city. One of them is found uh, um, in Monserrato, which is in, this, in the outskirts of, uh, of Cagliari, but uh, very well connected to the center. And uh, this, uh, uh, this campus, uh, the one in Monserrato, is, uh, is, very, is very modern. It's, it's uh, the, the newest we have. We have uh, a sports center. We have uh, several libraries. Uh, uh, clearly, we have the halls for residents. Uh, we, we have canteens, uh, museums, uh, sports facilities. Uh, Cagliari, in fact, is, uh, is indeed uh, um, a perfect for uh, also for open air sports and uh, our uh, university provides several services for foreign students coming here first of all is MOCA uh, the international students mobility office is the point of contact uh, for all international students uh, together with the students associations associations among which ESN is the first contact for uh, accommodation in particular uh, we organize uh, welcome events, uh, uh, we support the students for um, several po possible reg registrations to uh, courses or other services they need. We can provide services also for students with special needs or disabilities. And uh, of course, uh, for um, students um, arriving here, we we provide uh, a detailed email with, with um, the ma main information concerning pub public transportation uh, services, uh, social and cultural integration uh, activities, um, and so on. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Veronica. Uh, and now, I think the next uh, university to present is the University of Pitch. Uh, Judith, I think you will be presenting. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Judith Nemeth. I work at the University of Pitch International Center. Uh, together with the Erasmus project and the EDUC project, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, my university and the offer for the gap semester or gap year. Next slide, please. Page is located in the south. Um, what is a really good news from now on uh, that from April our airport is going to uh, open again. So we have some connections to other European cities as well. Unfortunately, not to your cities, to your colleagues, but still some some new destinations and what is important. But otherwise, page can be reached through Vienna or Budapest and then by uh, by the local train. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, our university was founded in 1367, one of the oldest university, not only in Hungary, but also in uh, Europe. We have 10 faculties. Uh, these are subdivided into departments, 21 doctoral schools, more than 300 study programs. At the moment, uh, the number of students around 22,490 uh, students. We have a big community of foreign students. 
4,778 students, degree students, exchange students, uh, Hungarian students, and uh, also uh, some of the students who are coming from the neighboring countries, we also say that they are foreign students. Um, our number of lecturers, um, 1,802,000, 2, and we have a lot of research projects, and as we have a medical school, and it's only four medical schools located in uh, Hungary, one is located in uh, Page, so we have a lot of clinics, hospitals, and not only uh, in uh, Page, but in several smaller cities around in our uh, county. So now as the total is 20, nine different hospitals. The 10 faculty mainly located uh, in Page, uh, but for instance, for the Faculty of Health Sciences, we have uh, smaller branches uh, near Austria and near to Slovenia. But for exchange students, the main location, what we suggest is Page, the headquarters and uh, the hostels and the whole uh, university life. Is, is in page. Um, apart from um, agriculture, engineering, and veterinarian sciences, uh, we teach all the main uh, disciplines. Um, and uh, before uh, this year, uh, we received quite many students already uh, within the EDUC uh, gap, um, uh, gap semester or gap year scholarship. So uh, we, we we are trying to get more and more students coming uh, to page. Next slide, please. Um, we use the international.pt.hu uh, main English uh, website where we state all the information uh, for degree students, also exchange students and uh, gap year students as well. Um, we have more than five hundred Erasmus courses in several languages. Uh, don't worry, the, the Hungarian is one of the di most difficult language maybe in Europe or in the world as well, but it's very nice sound. Uh, we, we give it a try. We, 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 we suggest students to, to take Hungarian as a foreign language, but we teach in three languages, for example, for the medical school uh, since 84. Uh, we teach in English and uh, also we teach in German as well. Uh, for the other faculties where we receive degree students or exchange students, the main language is English. So the requirements is uh, requirement for, for the language is English B2. Um, we have um, faculty coordinators for uh, all the other exchange programs as well. But from the main office, I'm the main contact person who is also students incoming and outgoing and also professors. Uh, but I'm dedicated for the gap semester, so I I am happy to help for those students coming from the other um, universities. Uh, as I mentioned, we have this optional Hungarian, Hungarian as a foreign language course uh, free of charge. Uh, throughout uh, the first semester or the second semester as well. Um, we have a very unique thing, uh, which is called Dancing University. This is also for credits. Uh, students can try different dances as well with Hungarian students or with international students. Um, also on this website, we, we have all the information concerning the living costs concerning dormitories or flats. What we usually uh, suggest that for the second semester, we have more uh, dormitory places available than in the first semester from September. Um, in Hungary, we start the semester always the first Monday of the month of September and the first Monday of the month of February. This is a very early for some cases, especially for, for the German universities. Um, the living costs uh, are around for concerning dormitory, that's around 200 euros per month. Uh, 
and it's much higher if somebody is uh, renting a flat. But overall, it's around 700 euros per month student has to have for um, being an exchange student in page. Next slide, please. Uh, with the student union, uh, we introduced the uh, personal mentors, so we have a buddy network. Also, we have um, Erasmus student network. Um, they are helping for incoming and outgoing students as well. And we think in the beginning of the semester is very important to have a student body who is helping through with all the documentation, administration, and get to know the city and uh, have the welcome, welcome week also together with the ESN and the buddies. Also, we have a student counseling. I think in these days, it's very important that if some students have some struggling events uh, concerning their studies or personal life, there is a counseling where they can contact and it's an English, uh, it's in English as well. So it's, um, it's a different kind of help uh, apart from the teachers and the local students. Um, we have uh, very good sports facilities, not only because of uh, the medical school. Um, those students are also really taking part of the, some of the uh, sport activities as they have to have sport as a, as a obligatory uh, courses. And as we have in two different uh, faculties, also they teach um, kind of sports sciences. Uh, so we have a lot of um, things going on concerning sports. And also, as I mentioned already, we have the dancing university as well as a kind of free time event and sports for credits. Uh, the city of Pécs, uh, the fifth biggest city in Hungary, we are located in the south. We are quite a Mediterranean city, full of students uh, during the semester, and it's very lively. We have a lot of cultural events as well, university events and uh, um, the, the city events. So it's, it's a very welcoming city for, for students from the from the public, uh, we have uh, 160,000 inhabitants. And for uh, more information, I'm the main uh, contact person, but also people can uh, reach me through the international.pt.hu. Thank you. Thank you, Yudi. Uh, now the next university is uh, tell me so I think it's Karmin who is going to take over. Thank you, Colleen, and uh, hello to everyone. My name is Fermin Mayen. I'm the head of the International Relations Office at Universidad Jaume I, and I'm in charge of the gap semester scheme at our university. I will start explaining where are we. Uh, Basically, we are on the east coast of Spain. More specifically, we are between Barcelona and Valencia, two major cities in, in our country. In fact, we are only one hour from Valencia by train and two hours and 15 minutes from, from Barcelona. So it's quite easy to uh, arrive to our city because apart from, from the proximity to these two major cities, it's very well connected because um, uh, most of your cities have direct flights to, to Valencia. Talking about the city of Castellón, we are almost uh, 200,000 inhabitants. It's quite a small city. It's very safe and we also have excellent beaches, very, very close to the, to the university, as I will show in the next slide. I like a lot this slide because it represents uh, all our city. On the lower part of the picture, you can see the university. I have to say that we have a unique campus. Uh, this means that Thanks that we are a young university. Today is our anniversary. We are 33 years old today. Uh, we have been growing along the same area. So all the faculties uh, share the same space. And as you can see in the picture, we are 
very close to the to the city. It only takes 10 minutes by tram to arrive to the city center, and it only takes 20 minutes to arrive to the seaside. Talking about our programs, we have four faculties, uh, the Faculty of Law and Economic Sciences, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, the School of Technology and Experimental Sciences, and the Faculty of Health. In red, we have highlighted uh, all the degrees where we have subject or courses uh, where language of instruction is English. In the rest of um, degrees, of bachelor's degrees, uh, the, teach the courses are taught in, in Spanish in most cases, but we have also, you have also access to, to learning courses of languages if you come to our university. And I highly recommend you to, to try to, to come out of our university speaking some Spanish. Regarding the accommodation, um, I think that these prices were before the inflation period. Uh, now they are a bit higher. In Castellón, uh, you can find a shared flight. It, it's the option that we highly recommend between 200 and 250 euros, I would say. It's much cheaper than Valencia or Barcelona. And the best uh, for you is that if you are in Castellón, as I have, te I have told you before, you are very close to these other two major cities, even to Madrid, and you can um, take advantage of this if you plan to come to Castellón to travel to, to these other major cities in Spain. Um, I have added here uh, an email address just in case you need to contact us for every reason. If you have any doubts, uh, we are at your disposal. You can contact us at our welcome desk. Uh, here you have the, the email address. And uh, we were told to be brief in our presentations. And for this reason, I've chosen the previous slide, please. Uh, I have chosen some pictures of our university that I will summarize very briefly. This one is very important because you have access to some videos and some photographs uh, from all the facilities of our university. And I invite you to make this visit clicking on the points, you will, red points or blue points, you will access photographs or pictures or videos about our university that will be uh, useful for you. And in the next slides, I have uh, selected some of the best pictures, I think, in our university. This one represents the Agora, it's the neurological center of our university. And as you can see, there are open spaces and green, green areas, and that's a characteristic that is embedded in our university. In the next slide, uh, we have a picture of our library. I have to say that it's it um, it has space for more than two thousand students. The next one represents uh, an aerial view of our sport area. Um, all at our university is brand new. In this sense, the 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 athletic track. Uh, is is completely completely new and the rest of services are very very attractive i think for students because you can practice here both open uh, outdoor as well as indoor uh, sports whatever you you want i think and the next slide is the auditorium so i invite you not only to participate in, in academic uh, courses or, or sports activities, but also cultural ones. We have a wide offer of theater, music, and cinema here at a very low cost at the auditorium, and it's very accessible for everyone. And I think that that's all. The, I finally have included the International Students Guide, where you can find more information, more detailed information about everything I have said, more pictures and more detail about the courses, the catalog, and whatever you may need to, to decide if you are interested or not coming to, to our city. 
anyway, it, ha it would be a pleasure to to solve any doubts if if some of them arise in the next minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Fermin. And now we've got the University of Potsdam, so I'll leave the floor to Vipke. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Vipke Giese. I am the EG Mobility Manager at the University of Potsdam's International Office. And we also would like to very much welcome you at the University of Potsdam for a gap semester. Um, first, a little bit about uh, Potsdam itself. Um, Potsdam, you can see on the map of Germany, the red dot. Um, it is located in the federal state of Brandenburg, which surrounds Berlin, the capital city. And Potsdam is um, a medium sized city of around 185,000 inhabitants. So it's a good size. Um, it is also a very safe place to live in. And we don't have beaches, um, but it's still a very nice city because we have lots of lakes, uh, lots of parks and even palaces um, because it is a very historic place. You can see it in the picture a little bit. Um, that is part of the campus um, Neues Palais, which is one of our three campuses. I will tell you more about that in a minute. Um, because it's such a sort of medium sized city, you can cycle everywhere. Um, there are also sort of uh, free of charge bikes around the university campuses. And uh, because it is so close to Berlin, as you can see on the map, it is only a 20 to 30 minute uh, train ride away from the capital city. So if you want to go there during the weekends, you are more than welcome to. Um, concerning student life, it is comparable to all the other partner universities of Eduk. Um, we have lots of sports courses from A, such as archery, to Z, such as Zumba. Um, we have student associations that you can participate in. We also have the Erasmus Student Network that do great social events. Um, we have special offers for students at local theatres, museums and cinemas. And we also have a buddy program, um, so students that are from the University of Potsdam uh, who help you with any questions related to your studies, about living in Potsdam and just generally getting around. Uh, we also have academic help in terms of faculty tutors and we also have, of course, uh, departmental exchange coordinators who will help you with any questions around your studies. And the next slide, please. Thank you very much. So um, here you can see that the University of Potsdam has three different campuses. Um, we are basically located um, in and around Potsdam. Uh, all three campuses are connected by train or bus services, so you don't have a long way to commute, even though they are set apart. Um, Campus number one, which you already saw in a little picture, is the campus New Palace. Um, on this campus, we have the Faculty of Arts, and that is one of the two faculties that are open for gap semester students. Um, number two is our, let's call it the technological campus. Um, it is Campus Golm, which is located on the outskirts of Potsdam. We have the Faculty of Science, the Faculty of Human Sciences and the Faculty of Health Sciences uh, located in Golm. But these are unfortunately not open to gap semester um, exchange students. And lastly, we have campus number three, uh, Campus Kripnitzi, which is closer to Berlin, you could say, sort of it's in between Potsdam and Berlin. And there we have the law faculty and digital engineering faculty. Both of them are not open to gap year students, but uh, the faculty of economics and social sciences is open to gap exchange students. OK, and the next one, please. Thank you very much. Um, so now that you heard about the location of Potsdam and the University of Potsdam, of course, the question, what can you study here? Um, our bachelor programs are mainly conducted in German, and that is why uh, we need you to have at least B1 or better even B2 German level if you want to study the bachelor courses in Potsdam. Um, we also offer language courses during the semester free of charge, so you can brush up on your German skills. And we also have a two week intensive course uh, before the start of the semester. This does come with a course fee. However, we do sometimes have scholarships available. Um, in terms of the courses, I already said that only the Faculty of Arts and the Faculty of Economics and Social Sciences are open for exchange students um, within the gap semester scheme. So if you decide to come to Potsdam, you would pick one of the two and stay within that faculty. Of course, there are many, many departments within each faculty, so you still have a large variety of courses to choose from. Um, what's 
perhaps a little bit special about Potsdam is that our course catalog changes each semester. So um, on the 15th of September, the course catalog for the next winter semester will be published. In Potsdam, it starts quite late in October. Um, and to give you a rough idea of which courses may likely be available, um, you can check out the previous winter semester's course catalog. Um, I have put the link in the presentation. And um, that's it from Potsdam very briefly. If you have any questions uh, afterwards, I'm happy to answer them, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mika. Uh, now, the next presentation is of the University of Southeastern Norway. However, unfortunately, uh, we have no colleagues uh, from this university that could join us today, which means I'm going to be the one introducing this university to you. So uh, I might not do it fully justice, but the colleagues at uh, USN have let us know that if you have any questions, they are at your disposal. So please, if you have any specific questions regarding USN and what's available there for a gap semester, reach out to your local EDUC team and we'll um, pass on your questions to the colleagues at USN. So I'll go very quickly through these slides. Uh, you'll be able to look them up afterwards uh, when we send you the presentation anyway, but what maybe is important to know is that um, the University of Southeastern Norway uh, is has several campuses located in the southeastern region of Norway, so not all in the same place. Uh, and they have four uh, main faculties, so School of Business, Faculty of Humanities, Sports and Education Science, Faculty of Technology, Natural Sciences and Maritime Sciences, as well as Faculty of Health and Social um, Sciences. You'll find a lot of info in the um, in the presentation, as I said, about the number of students and programs, uh, as well as um, anything you might need. Uh, but I think what I want to focus on is uh, this slide, which is the courses that are actually available for Educ Gap Year students uh, next year. And for USN, you have the choice between two specific programs. That means that you don't get to pick and choose courses from all faculties, but you have to choose either the Viking History and Old Norse Literature program or the Scandinavian Studies program. So you, if you are interested in going to Norway, this will be one of the programs that you'll have to choose from. And the first one uh, is only for the autumn semester, as you can see here. And the second one can be either for autumn or spring or for the full academic year. Uh, and basically the first one, as you can see, is uh, more uh, archaeology, history, literature, languages. And you do get to uh, go on excursions to the places mentioned in the sagas and skaldic poetry, which sounds quite nice to me personally. Um, and the second one is Scandinavian studies. So uh, it's a selection of courses in Norwegian language. Uh, you have you learn about society, about culture uh, and explore yeah, various dimensions of the Norwegian way of life. So both programs seem very interesting and will probably offer you uh, an openness compared to what you're studying at home. As I said, I'm maybe maybe I'm not the best person to sell you these programs because I'm not from USN, but uh, you can always ask questions if you have any, uh, and we'll relay them to our colleagues in Norway. And yeah, as I said, you have all the important links about what services are provided uh, at USN. They also have a buddy week orientation. Uh, they assist international students. Uh, in every way that they can and yeah i think i'll stop there for uh, usn because i think maybe probably the most important part is uh, the questions that you might have so real quick a reminder regarding the selection of courses you've got several conditions to respect when you select your courses we recommend bachelor level courses as we've already said during the meeting because obviously you get to choose subjects that you've never studied before and it's easier to pick a bachelor course you however need to be careful to select an equivalent of 30 cts credits per semester and these courses must be outside your field of studies so complementary courses or different discipline altogether and you uh, put these courses that you've selected in the application form in the learning agreement section and what could be interesting if you 
uh, have a hard time looking through the course catalogs uh, of our universities uh, is that we do have a list of courses that former GAP semester students have taken. And if you're interested in that list for inspiration, you can always ask your local educ team and we'll send it to you. Now you will find on the presentation uh, many useful links at each receiving university. So with the course catalogs, the email addresses where you can write if you have any questions. And uh, we also indicated the mobility periods because as uh, some colleagues have mentioned, we have sometimes very different dates for our fall and spring semester. I'll let you go through all these links and information on your own. I think uh, maybe now the most important thing would be to answer questions if you have any. I don't know if you have already written some in the chat. I will try to look through it right now. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write them down now. Now is the perfect time. Uh, I see that some colleagues have already um, answered some of the questions. Uh, so for example, I think it was uh, regarding uh, Potsdam. Uh, or no, actually, everybody. So the question was, can I pick courses from different departments? For example, a few courses from economics and a few from social sciences. Uh, and I think, Vipke, you've answered that yes, uh, at Potsdam it's uh, possible, but you uh, you must, uh, you can choose courses from different departments within the same faculty. In Cagliari, it's the same. Uh, but you have to keep in mind the position of different campuses, true. You, it's the same, and I think I can safely say that for Nanterre, it's also the same. For most of us, I think it's uh, pretty true. Uh, in Spain, too, Fermin just confirmed. Uh, is it disqualifying to apply to several universities? Um, I wouldn't say it's disqualifying, but uh, we do encourage you to pick one, or at least to, I guess, make a selection. But the thing is, um your university will pre-select you for one partner only so yeah it's we encourage our students for example at upn we encourage them to only choose one to focus their um their um uh, i guess application more and to build their projects accordingly uh but i guess it can differ depending on Universities, I can see that in Cagliari, you can only apply for one destination. I think most of us encourage you to only apply for one. Uh, what level of Spanish is required for URI if I would like to choose courses from psychology? I think Fermin, maybe you can answer that better than I can. Yeah, it's it's a V2 level. Yeah. But we, honestly speaking, we only ask for A2 level, but A2 level is not enough to follow the courses. We give you access to our university, but with A2, you cannot manage to follow correctly the courses. And we highly recommend a B2 level. Thank you, Fermin. And I think that's the case for all partners. If we do want you to have a B2 level in the language of the courses you're following so that uh, you uh, have a better chance of actually following along. Uh, I. Don't know. Yeah. As an economic student, can I pick social sciences as my gap year subject? Um, I would say yes. The only thing is we don't want you to study the exact same uh, things that you're studying at your home university. So it always depends on what exactly you're studying uh, in your faculty at home. Uh, but and sometimes some students in their courses that they've picked, they've got one subject that it's quite close to what they study, but they have a variation of other faculties in this list. So, yeah, it, it really depends. If you only pick students, uh, if you only pick subjects that have to do with economics and you're already an economics student, then we might say, no, you need to change your courses list. But it always depends on the whole list. We try to look at the whole thing and then let you know, oh, maybe you should change this one uh, or this one. But we always try to we're always at your disposal to help you modify this list if we see that it's not exactly, um, it's not quite right. Uh, can I speak? Yeah, of course. 
Uh, thank you. So, uh, and all this will be decided uh, at my home university in the selection process, right? So there won't be any complications with this later. If I, I don't know, I want to study some social science, but uh, I study economics, so it's not like it's the same faculty, basically or not faculty, but it's it's very close. And so this will be decided at my home university so they're like the people at page will tell me if uh, I shouldn't pick uh, that subject because it's way too close to my own. Yeah usually the people at your un home university will let you know and sometimes uh, they can also um, for example if you want to go to I don't know um, if you decide to go to Potsdam then the colleagues at Potsdam might also be asked, OK, is this subject OK? And yeah, we do talk to each other. So usually we try to help to help out uh, if we see that uh, a colleague is like, OK, we've got the students. We want them to go on a gap semester, but his list might not be right. Can you check? And yeah, we try to do it this way. Thank you for your answer. No problem. Uh, I see that there are other. Other questions in the chat, trying to follow along, uh, but I think that Fabio has been answering because it was concerning Cagliari. Um, okay, maybe I can read it for the recording later on uh, for those who might watch. The question was uh, at the University of Cagliari, if there is a course that is annual, is it possible to study it during my autumn gap semester, even though I will not finish the whole course? And have you answered that no, it's not possible since the exam will be at the end of the complete program, which is important to keep in mind indeed. And there was a second question regarding Uri. Are there student dormitories available for the students participating in the Educ Mobility? And yeah, that mean I think, yeah, OK, it's privately managed, the dormitory. And normally they only accept long stays. So. As Fermin mentioned during his presentation, the recommendation is to uh, share a flat. Uh, regarding the last question, it's I think more for you. You did it's uh, about the University of Pitch. Uh, is the educ at pte.hu the right contact address? Yeah, that's also a good contact address or uh, Erasmus uh, at pte.hu as well, or mine. I can put mine as well. Okay, thank you, Judy. Uh, we also have a question for the university fee. Do I have to pay it at my home university? Um, I don't want to say anything wrong on this. I think uh, it's just the same procedure as for any Erasmus uh, exchange. So I don't think you have to double pay the fee if that's the question. Uh, I don't know. Does any of the colleagues from a partner university have a better answer than mine on this? I don't think so. So I guess no, uh, I, th I think you're right, Colleen. Like okay. um, so the, the outgoing students um, are registered at their home university and then they participate as an exchange student mm -hmm. uh, and are hosted uh, at the Educ universities where they don't have to pay uh, additional fees, enrollment fees. Thank you, Chloe. OK, I hope that answers uh, your question. Uh, is there anything else that I've that I might have missed in terms of questions or is there yeah anyone else that has uh, something to ask as we've mentioned we are all at your disposal if you want to ask us specific questions regarding our universities later on um, all the links are in the presentation so if you want the presentation to be sent to you uh, please send a message uh, to Theodora in the chat and she will send it to you directly. Uh, but you should also be able to find this uh, presentation on our respective websites later on. I don't see any other question. Uh, and if there aren't any more, maybe we'll call it a day because we've already uh, gone over the 4 p.m. limit and it's a Friday and you probably all have uh, other things that you might want to do and start enjoy your weekend. 
Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for joining us. As I said, we're all at your disposal if you have any other questions regarding the GAP semester. And uh, we are all looking forward to receiving your applications and welcoming you in our respecting, respective universities. All right, so I'll leave you some time to put your email addresses if you haven't, but always otherwise, yeah, I'll wish you all a nice weekend. I'll stop.